Welcome back everyone. Are you ready to get a little messy today? We are going to be using temper paints and again, household tools that we are going to design, figure out, find ourselves and turn it into an amazing drawing. Usually, I'll give you a hint, artists use a palette knife to do this type of painting. We are not, we are going to use our own tools. Ready, set, go. Okay, so I read the list and I got all of my materials that were on the list on my, I almost knocked it down, on my workspace. I'm going to roll my sleeves up because we are working with tempera today. Tempera washes out of things, so not to worry about that. These are our tools. Generally, when you're doing artwork like this, you use a palette knife. I will move this so you can see it you move the paint with this and make lines and spread it around. Now, we are going to be our inventive selves and use things that we have around the home. Forks, knives, young ones ask permission. This is serrated so it will make a mark in itself. These can push paints around. Old combs, piece of wood, tongue depressors, and you'll use many of these if you don't want to wash them off. And then we have something I discovered last night. I was putting the bread away and I saw this and I was like, oh, this would be perfect for my art lesson tomorrow. So I'll set these off to the side, put these over here. You've got all your tempo paints and yellows, blues, reds. Make sure you have your three primary colors. They will mix together as you do your no paintbrush painting and brown. Let's move these up here out of the way so I can move my paper up. Now the first time I did it, and you may see a little snapshot, I put too much paint on the paper. So today I'm going to take the lesson I learned and transform it into something amazing. Would you like to see what it looks like first? This is a painting done with a daytime kind of soft scene. And as you can see, these are all put on the paper with a flat object. Thinking of the palette knife, pushing the paint, moving it. You're gonna think it's super simple, but you are gonna have to think. And then this one is like, there's a storm coming, it's brewing. Look at that sky. It's just whipping all over the place. And again, flat objects, you're just gonna move your hands. I like the colors in the mountain range. And then you have three different, you have the forefront, you have the main, and then you have the actual backdrop of the clouds. I used obviously my da, 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 comb. Don't take a comb, they do wash with soap and water unless you get permission. I'm, uh, even if you're an adult, get permission if it's not your comb. I'll move these out of the way. Now you have an idea and you can see the swirling and the movement and the color changing. Let's do, let's do something bright and sunny. Now white is what I'm going to put on first. Not going to glop too much. You squeeze gently and move it. All right. I want a bright sky. Now since I want a little pink in my sky, what do I need to put next to? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I have red. Sometimes you got to be careful because the color splurts out of these. Just a little dibble dabble will do because red is a very strong color and I can move it with my tools once I get it on. There you go. Three. Yellow. Do we need? Yes. Let's put a gorgeous sun area. I would like a little orange. So what do I need to open up again? Oh, and I want little flowers on the bottom, so let's get some yellow here. It's springtime and the daffodils are growing up off my paper. Not a big deal. I can see that I'm putting too much paint on it already, so I need to slow down. It's just really fun to squeeze paint out of a bottle, I know. Put one little drop in there because I don't want it too strong. I'm going to try not to put... Now, well, let's put a little blue in it. Just a drop, Miss Linda. Do not overpaint your paper. I always say a little goes a long way and um, this is like purple. Let's see what happens. And it's true. I would like more of a forest mountain area looking. So I'm going to use my greens. 
Go easy on the paint, Miss Linda. I think I need a coach on this one. A little bit of brown down here, just a dot or two. See, this happens to, there's a little dried part, but it, it gets liquid again. All right, let's not overdo this. I'm gonna put a little bit of blue in here so that we have a change in color. Now I only have a little bit on my hands. I have, oh boy. Maybe it's not me, maybe it's, maybe I can say it's the bottles are dripping too fast. I do have a wet towel, really handy to have if you're working with paints. And then you can dry them off. All right, little brown, and I'm gonna show you what you can do. Let's see, drop, drop, drop. And now I wanna put a little red in there. I don't know why, my brain's saying grab the red. So I will grab the red. I can see it already, too much paint, but that's all right. It will dry and make a texture as well. All right, just a little bit. You ready? Put the paint down, Miss Linda, put the paint down. Okay, I hear you. Put the paint down. Now, we're gonna use our tools. I'd like to see what happens with this. It's open, so it won't push an entire puddle of it around. So let's see, let's see if I can get, you know what? I believe I have a little shorty. There we go, short ones. I did cut some. All right, let's try these. Nothing like having your buckets of treasures and things. Let's see what happens here. Go over it a couple times. Don't keep going over it. Ooh, I like that. Now, you can wipe it off and use it again if you like. I'm going to the movement of the clouds. Spring sky. Touch that. I'm going to get a new one right away. Now, since I have a workspace, I can just fling that paint off to the side. That looks like an American flag, which is okay because whatever's happening is happening and I'm going to let it happen. I guess it's the rainbow sky. We have the rainbow sky. Let's try something a little flatter. Now, I'm going to break this because I want a smaller piece. This is where your hands are gonna get soiled. They're gonna get a little dirty. See how it changes? It's not that open and doesn't do that like flingy stuff. Go down here one more time and then I'm gonna start on my mountains. Whoa, that is a rainbow sky. I like what's on here. <laughs> Here's where it's there's gonna be too much paint, but that's all right. Create my mountains. See all the paint? Wipe it off. Dip it again. Like I said, dirty fingers. Mountains are peaks. They're a little more geometric. Now that I have the sky and I can go up above them. Lots of paint. Too much paint, Miss Linda. But I guess I can show you too much paint. I just push it off to the side. Oh, I like that. That's got a little fling to it where there it is oh I I know what let's try this this is the very first time you are witness to Miss Linda Mer learning as you do oh cool it scrapes a lot of paint off it actually almost goes down to the paper but that's all right oh look at that little swirl I don't think I want it right there if some of the white area, the negative space shows, excellent. All right, now let's create our mountain. Flowing with pine trees. I want a little bit of, all right, one, two, three. Now, uh, I th I'm gonna scoop a little brown up. I want a little brown up here to make sure we know it's not part of the sky. There we go, and look at these little guys back here that came up, these little yellow ones all on their own. And one more, keep saying one more. Do you believe me? All right, toss that off to the side. Now we're going to do our little area down here. And I'm gonna use a big, I almost said spoon. Oh, that's why I almost said spoon. I didn't get to show you these, or these. All right, here we go. Creating some sort of growth in the front to give your painting dimension. Now I'm gonna go with the knife, which is tighter. Let's gonna go up. 
No, let's go down. As you're doing your artwork, you're going to learn things. And if you want to talk to yourself like Miss Linda does, you go for it because I learn a lot from just the stuff I say. To these are very reindeer ears. To change this, I'm going to go over again and give it movement and flick paint on my hands, which is fine. Do not keep going over it because you're just going to have a big brown mess. Now to separate these, I'm actually going to try to put, all right, rub it. That doesn't work. Push it. There we go. All right, now we have the forefront. Gently, 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 gently. There we go. When it dries, it's going to be spectacular. Let's see if I can do this. Lift this up. I'm going to show you the mess underneath, too. This is why you cover your area. But check that out. It took, what, like six minutes? And I got to drip paint all over a bunch of paper. What fun. Have a blast. Test it out. Work on a covered area, please. Oh, was I right? That was fun. Okay, now go wash your hands and clean up your air. Well, clean up your area first, then wash your hands. And we will see you at next class. Bye.